Join me, Buck Woody, and Marisa Matthews as we guide you through the Learning T SQL modules on Microsoft Learn. Hey, Buck, I've been playing around with the commands you showed me earlier, and it's actually a lot of fun. However, I noticed that when I select more than one row of data, it doesn't seem to have any kind of order. Yeah, the database just throws data in the tables as quickly as possible. So if you want to sort the results, you can use the order by statement. And once again, we're just going to build on the select statement that you already learned. Um, let's say you want that same list from the last lesson of the names, but you want the names in alphabetical order. You can use the same code we had before that we used to get the data and just add an order by statement onto it here let's take a look at an example uh, so we've got select name from people where type equals speaker that's what you did last time and all we did was move the semicolon to the end of the words order by name so let's run and see what we come back with and it just so happens when it comes back buck is first and marisa is second now this works even if you want to order the data by a column that isn't in the select statement. For instance, uh, let me ask you, what if you want to get the name of all the people and order them by the type of person they are? What should we type? Let's see. So we want the names of the people, but uh -huh. ordered by the type of person. Uh -huh. Would this work? Let's so see. select name right. from people, uh -huh. order by type semicolon. Let's see. Let's see if that's going to work. Look at there. So now you have all the people by type. Now we could also just add a where on here and just get the speakers, but then you wouldn't need the order by type because you've got it right there. We could also ask for more things. Um, we can ask for ascending or descending order uh, like this here. I'll just type this in. Um, let's say we want them in descending order. We just type in desk or ASC. One would be descending and the other would be ascending. So we can do it that way. Okay, so, I mean, I see the building ID you mentioned. So we just keep adding things to the previous statement? Yeah, exactly. And remember that earlier we limited the results of our data with the where clause. We said we only wanted the name column where it equal, equaled the type. It equaled the type as speaker. Well, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of names in here. What if I just want to see a few of them? Hmm. Okay, well, for that, let's go in here and uh, you can use the top feature for that. We see here select. It's exactly the same thing we had before, but we can say just give us the top two or top one. This is the top two names. So when we do this, of course, we only have right now two speakers, but we could actually change that to be maybe uh, one uh, speaker. So let's just change that. I just want the first one that comes back. Now notice I ordered it by name here, and that means the first top two names in alphabetical order. You can bring back lots of data in different ways. You can imagine those ways just with the order by statement here. I mean, I think that's pretty useful, but believe it or not, I have people sometimes with the first name, first, first, with the same first and last name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With that, for that, um, you can actually use something we call with ties. Uh, if values are tied for something, like let's say the names are the same, you've got a couple of Buck Woodies in there. That's horrifying to think about, but let's assume you do for a moment and you need all of the people who have that same name to come back. You can just add the with ties and it will violate how many you told it to bring back because it will find the ones that are also equal. Here's the syntax of what that sort of looks like. This won't happen with us right now, but we'll basically just add the with ties. You can see we're just building on what we did before. And this will just come back. And if there were uh, two Buckwoodies in there, which would be horrifying, uh, then you would actually get <laughs> both Buckwoody and Marisa Matthews, even though you said you just wanted to, the two back. Okay, this is cool. But I'm thinking about my original goal of reporting out the data. And if I have thousands of people, this will all just scroll by too quickly. Yeah. 
Well, there's a few ways to do this, to deal with this. Um, what you're talking about is called paging the results. Uh, you'll probably do that right in the tool you're using because Power BI and other reporting tools can just use Transact SQL to get the data. You just get it all and they'll figure it out. But there is a statement you can use in Transact SQL to page the data as well. Um, let's assume we've got thousands of people in our table. We could page the results, let's say 10 at a time. Here we go. Um, so let me get rid of that with ties there. Uh, so we'll just select name and type by pe from people, order by a name ascending. We'll start with the first row and then we'll get the next 10 rows. So this will only come back with 10 rows. And of course, we don't have 10 rows, but it would go get all of the names and it would get 10, it would stop. And the next statement would say 11, and then perhaps, or rather 10, uh, because it starts at zero, we're computer people. <laughs> and then we would go uh, up to 20 and so on. So it just keeps getting the next ones that we want. Um, by the way, you see those dashes in there? Mm -hmm. uh, those are comments. They're not going to run. They're just words that we can use. And this way we can offset to 10, do the same thing over and over. And it's a good idea to use an order by here so you get what you're looking for. But the key here is you're just building statement on top of statement. That's the power of Transact SQL. Okay, I think I'm getting it. I mean, but I'm thinking of another situation here. So yeah. what, are, what if I have a lot of the same values of yeah. that return, but I really just want one of them? How do I do that? Okay. So you only want one Jane Doe this time. Yep. So it's kind of the opposite of the with ties. You don't want to see Jane Doe, Jane Doe. You just want to see her one time. Well, you can limit the amount of values come back to only one of something if it's duplicated. And you use that with the distinct keyword. Here we go. Uh, so I'll just pop this in here. Now we say, I only want the distinct names from people. So if we run this, we're only going to get each name one time. We'll get the distinct names. Now we start working with events. This might be something we want. We might want to know all the events, but not the sessions in every event or something like that. Okay. I think I'm getting it, but uh, what do we do next? Okay, if the select statement, by the way, is one of the most powerful concepts in T-SQL, the next most important one to learn is filtering data with predicates. Oh, what is that? The predicate is the bit there at the end that we've already seen. When we use the where clause, where is so powerful because it can show matches and even anti-matches for the values we wanna show. Here, look, remember this query that I ran earlier just paste mm -hmm. that in there, select name from people where name is Buck Woody, and then, and then we get one back. Well, there's, there's actually a lot more than just the equals part. So here, let me paste this, and this isn't, this isn't code. I'm just going to use this to display the screen. You can actually use these things, too. Uh, the greater than, less than symbols means not equals. Greater than is greater than. Greater than or equal to. Uh, less than, less than or equal to. So I'll tell you what. Um, what do you think we should type if we want everyone except Buck Woody? Okay, so let me try this out. Okay. Would this work? Select name huh. from people. Right. Where name greater than, less than, single quote Buck Woody, single quote semicolon. All right, let's find out. Select name from people where not equal to Buck Woody and end the statement. And looks like you got everyone except Buck Woody. There, there's so many more things we can use in the where clause. For instance, we can use is not null to find all values that aren't empty. Uh, we can use uh, the in in statement to include a group of things that we wanna see in the where clause. We can show the between values that are well, between two values and much, much more. I'll let you go off and try a few of those, but there are two more I would like to point out. Okay. Like and combining conditions. Cool, let's check them out. <laughs> okay, all right. So if you wanna get any part of a name or any value, uh, you can use the like keyword. For instance, if you wanna find all the names that start with M, you would use the like keyword and then a symbol that means and everything else. Here, I'll show you an example of this. So I'll just paste this in, select name from people where name is like 
instead of equals m percentage and basically what this means is it's going to get every name that starts or has an m at the front and that's the way this works and we've got one and now the last uh, powerful concept to think about here is that you can combine uh conditions for instance if you want to find the names that start with an M are also speakers, you can use the AND keyword to build that here. Let me show you how that looks up over here. So let's take a look and dissect this a little bit. Select name from people where the name is like M. So we're good there. Then we added an AND. The type is a speaker. Now, we just have one M in our system. But if we had lots of M's and only one or two of them were a speaker, that's what would come back. Um, there's another one uh, instead of and called or. So let's see what else you can do here. Um, let's take a look at what you would do if you want all the names that start with a J and any name that is a speaker. Okay, well, uh, so you kind of make me do a lot of work here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So all speakers are names that would start with J. Right. So is that select name, comma, okay. from people, okay. where name like single quote J percentage, single quote, or type equals single quote speaker, single quote semicolon? Exactly. So let me put my uh, what you type there. So we're going to go get the name and we're going to go get the type. We want to see two columns of data this time from people where the names start with a J or they're a speaker. So it's interesting that or is sort of additive. It does both. So let's see what we get back when we do this one. And in our case, of course, we're going to get everything back. There's the first condition. There's our J and they're the type equal speakers. So the or is quite powerful and is very similar to and. So we got both our speaker names and also Jane Doe, who is not a speaker. Okay, now let's try something you haven't seen before. Um, you want to find the sessions we have that are below 50 minutes. So let me paste in here. Uh, let me just copy and paste this. Let me show you what the table looks like so that you have a reminder of that. And then you're going to do the work. Okay, there's your table. And what I want you to do is all the sessions we have below 50 minutes. Okay, so I want the names of the sessions. And I remember that I have a lesson symbol from earlier. Uh -huh. And I see that sessions has a length attribute where we entered the number of minutes. So right. would that be session name uh -huh. from sessions uh -huh. less than 50 semicolon? Okay, let's take a look. You said select name from sessions where length is less than 50. You think that's going to do it? Semicolon, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see. And uh, sure enough, we get Maurice's session, which is below 50 minutes. That session runs perfect. Great, cool. So I think I have to go practice this a little, and then I'll probably have some more questions. Sounds great.